This presentation is part of a curriculum developed by the partners listed on the slide through grant funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We encourage you to share, reuse, and adapt these slides as needed. Welcome to this first module of the Digital Public Library Partnership Project Self-Guided Curriculum. My name is Jennifer Brunel. I am the Director of the Montana Memory Project for the Montana State Library. This module is called Planning for Digitization. Digitizing and sharing content has certainly become more valued in the last five years. Still, not everyone understands the value and the importance of sharing digital content. You've considered creating a digital collection, but you may be asking yourself the following questions. How do I begin? Is it worth the time and effort? How do I convince my administrators of the importance? And what about the cost of resources, like equipment and people? So your big questions are, how do you get buy-in and how do you get other people to understand and value the value and let you have the resources you need? To answer these questions, we need to understand what it means to digitize something. It is more than just scanning stuff. It is an entire process of steps, and each step is important. The first step in the process is to select the items you would like to share. The second step is to catalog the items. The items need to be cataloged with information that will help make them discoverable. The third step is to reformat the items to make them shareable. And the final step is the key step in the process. Share the content with an audience. Now that we understand the digitization process, let's discuss some reasons why it is important to share your content. Digitization improves access and discovery of your content. For example, is your cultural content locked in a special cupboard or vault? Perhaps it is hidden behind a desk or sitting in a box. It is only accessible if someone knows it exists and requests it, and even then we may hesitate to share. Digitized content contributes to the pool of cultural heritage materials and other research content available online. Digitizing our content helps share the stories we tell about our history. Digitization can help preserve our valuable content. We often hide our special items or store them in locations that deter use because we are worried the items will be damaged or stolen. These are valid concerns. Digitization allows the ability to share rare, fragile items with a broad audience and white gloves are not necessary. Digital formats aren't necessarily more long-term than physical ones, but they do serve as a backup. Here's an example of why a digital copy can be be better for users and for preserving the originals. One public library has a series of books on the architecture in the community. The series was created by a local author and it is no longer in print. The books have been used annually in a middle school project and are beginning to show, to show wear and tear. In an effort to protect the books from further damage while still making the books accessible to a large number of students, they were digitized and made available on the internet. Digital collections can help improve your institutional web presence. Creating an online present, presence takes time and it is helpful to be discoverable in more than one way. Adding digital content can create pathways to your institution that did not previously exist. Establishing partnerships with local community members and organizations can help you reach your goals. Partnerships with clubs, community organizations, and government agencies can lead to better resources. For example, a public library can partner with the local museum, historical society, churches, or local clubs to share resources. These resources may include knowledge, staff time, volunteers, computer equipment, and money for projects. Let's use this photograph as an example as how partners can assist you in the digitization process. To many of us, this image may just be of a train at a station. A train enthusiast, on the other hand, might be able to tell you the exact type of train in the image, how long this type of train was in use, and maybe could even tell you where it typically traveled. This kind of knowledge is needed when cataloging and adds context to your image. 
Partnerships with community organizations can also improve your reach. Partners can help connect you to their brighter, broader networks and connect your resources with new communities. Partnerships with larger regional and national hubs can also help you share your content. These types of partners can additionally provide technical and other types of support not available within your community. Partners can share their knowledge and help us learn new things. Try to connect with institutions doing similar projects to collaborate and for new learning opportunities. The final reason to consider a digitization project is that your content is just one piece of a much larger whole. The stories told by your content can multiply when it appears with content from multiple institutions. Now that we have discussed some big ideas about why it's important to digitize and share your content, I'd like to share five tips for getting started with a digitization project. Tip 1. Where. Once you've created digital content, it needs a place to live. Not only do you need a storage space, but you will want to share the content with an audience. Explore if there is a DPLA hub in your area. Can you work with the hub? Can you work with other local, state, or regional partners to make your content accessible? Tip two is when. Do you have a deadline date? Work backwards from the date and determine if you can finish this project on time. You may encounter problems along the way, and having extra time is optimal. Tip three, how. These suggestions appear on the slide in order of preference. Partnerships are highly encouraged to share the load of a digital project. Partners can assist with financial resources, staffing, and equipment. Vendors can be hired for reformatting and often can help with other tasks related to the project. Of course, vendors charge for their services, but the expense may be worth it. Reformatting is time consuming and can be expensive to do in-house as well. The other option is to purchase the proper equipment to do the reformatting tasks. This equipment is expensive and is only advised if your volume of reformatting warrants it. Keep in mind that equipment, like all technology, becomes outdated quickly. It is often far less expensive to work with a vendor than to purchase your own equipment. Tip four is why. Be ready to explain why it is important to create digital collections. Share the reasons we've already discussed in this presentation about access, discover, and use of, of digital content. Tip five is what? Select the items you will digitize. See the next module in this curriculum, the selecting content module, to learn more about what type of content you should select. This concludes this first module. I thank you for uh, your attention during this brief webinar and hope that you will continue with the next module on selecting content.